feel like I've been here before. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, it was my first free agency kind of experience, so I didn't really do anything. I let my agent, my people, just um, do the work and tell me what the option was. But I knew I wanted to be in Toronto. I feel like I was building something, and um, you know, like I said, there's a big, there's a bigger plan for me than just playing in Toronto. You know, I wanted to be an exp inspiration for the kids. I wanted to do a lot of different stuff, and being uh, Canadian. Um, that made it a lot easier for me to um, choose Toronto anyway, and especially knowing the family, the my teammates. Um, I got a lot of people around here that helped me get here, so yeah, it was pretty easy to make that decision. Yeah, uh, I mean, like I said, it, we already knew a little bit before, but um, I couldn't say nothing. That's why when I saw you earlier, I couldn't say much. <laughs> Um, I mean, no, because I feel like Masai Bobby did a really good job to show me that they wanted me to stay here and um, kind of show me my role. And um, it's all the things that I really wanted to do. So um, it's not like I was looking for to be somewhere else or be somebody else. Um, you know, going to another team sometimes, you still got to prove yourself. You still got to do a lot of different things that probably are not what you want to do. So I think in Toronto, I knew exactly what I wanted to be. Um, they let me, um, you know, inspire kids, let me um, get build my own image and be myself, and that's something that you always want to be able to do. Was it a little flattering through the process, though? I mean, I saw the piece in The Ringer, and they called you a steal of free agency, and, and then all those other sites that were all those other teams that were maybe calling. Uh, I mean, I, I think it really helped me just realizing how far I, became, I came, um, just the role the role that I've you know, showed people that I was able to do and the intangible that I could bring to a team. I think uh, a lot of teams probably saw that during the playoffs, just the, you know, playing, starting, not starting, playing minutes, not minutes, defense, offense. I think um, just the versatility that I have, um, you know, hearing from other teams that they could see it, that definitely was a good thing for me. But um, like I said, it doesn't stop there. You know, I wanted to be comfortable. Uh, you play your best, best basketball when you feel like you're at home, when you feel like you know everything and things are going smooth. So I don't think I would have felt that more um, appreciated or felt like home uh, anywhere else but in Toronto. Midway through last season, did you think you'd be sitting here? No. No. Uh, the first 20 games, no. There's no way. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, me and Eve jokes about that all the time. Um, we were saying, like, uh, you know, we're probably gonna have to pack our bags and stuff, um, cause it didn't look too, it didn't look nice at the beginning. And to be honest with you, we were hearing about um, the trade deadline and all. And the year before, I saw Norman and all those guys. He was playing well and still got traded. So I was like, if I'm not playing well, I might not get traded, but I might get waived or whatever. So that's how we were thinking, and it kind of helped us out too to find a way to get better and you know just adjusting our role to the player that we are now. I mean, I just thought that they would either not play me and be done at, at the end of the year. I think if you don't play, if you go to a point where you stop, you play a lot and you don't play at all, you kind of know what's coming next. And that's pretty much what I was scared about. How important was it for you to stop thinking about that stuff to turn around? Um, I mean, it, it was it was hard at first because it's a lot of ego, a lot of pride that you put down. Um, that's just that I had so much, like I said, I saw myself as as just such a player and um, I had to learn that um, I'm better at other stuff and those things that, you know, I haven't focused on them before. So I was just kind of changing your focus and I think that really helped me with the people that I have around me. Um, they did a really good job showing me in film and showing what I was capable of doing, making me watch other people and um, just to see that there was so many ways to be impactful and have a great career in the NBA, I think that really helped me out. Um, not everybody's a scorer, not everybody can do 
what Kevin Durant do or whatever Kyrie do. So, um, you know, that would really help me out. Bobby said in a statement that you're not satisfied. Mm -hmm. um, looking for as a player, what are maybe some of the things that you want to accomplish? I just want to be a more complete player. Like I said, I think I, the more years, the more experience I get, the more talent that I figure. Like I said, I I'm play basketball but um, not as long as everybody. So there's so much stuff that I could learn about the game, uh, so much techniques and stuff, footwork that I could get better at. That um, Those are the little things we're trying to focus on. Obviously, um, you know, we did get better, but I do feel like there's another level. And every year, I think that I'm taking another step and another step. So uh, hopefully, we can do that the same thing this year. And it doesn't take 20 games for that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, I don't go there thinking, you know, I'm a start or whatever. And, you know, I know my role now. If it happens, it happens. But I do know what I could bring to the team. I know what my role is. And um, I know my teammates. I know the system. I know if we do anything new, um, I'm going to know a little bit more of more than anybody. So um, that definitely helps out. But it's also, the, you know, like I said, my coaches, my trainers, I'm really close to a lot of them now. So, um and those are all things that make it the season a lot easier. You come in and you already know your role. Um, that's going to help me out for sure. And like I said, basketball is a lot with confidence and being comfortable. And I think that's going to help me a lot. Chris, what can you say about just the city of Toronto as a whole? I saw that you know you addressed some comments from a, another media member earlier in the week. Uh, what can you expand on what the city of Toronto means to you, I guess? Uh, I mean, it's like I said, you know, we're in Canada, we're at home. They love their, they love their team. Um, like I said, the city is doing everything for anybody that brings anything for the city and anybody that plays that represent Toronto does a lot of things for that. And um, the resource, the fan, so many stuff that I could do. Like I said, I'm thinking about um, like expansion. That's when I say that it's like make young kids think that it's bully, it's possible to make it to the NBA and all that. And I think I have a great platform here to do that. And I think Toronto gave me that platform. I didn't have it nowhere else. So. Um, when, I st when you start looking at that from where I started and where I am now, um, the city did a lot for me. So um, it's just, like I said, you I can't put one word to describe what Toronto did for me, but I know they did a lot. And that's one thing I'm grateful about. And hopefully I can keep doing that because, like I said, um, it's just the beginning, really. Uh, Chris, What's the, what is it that you most look forward to this season or maybe like an individual goal and a team goal for yourself? Um, I just want to get better, to be honest with you. I think I'm reading the game a lot more. I'm more into the game, more than I was before. I'm putting a lot more work. Um, like I said, I've always been a hard worker, but, um, you know, there's a thing about work smarter, not harder. Um, those are things that I've got better into, and I just got to figure out ways to help the team. Like I said, I think last year they got us thinking that we're making the playoff, and we made it. Um, that's the next push. What's the next push for us is trying to get to the finals, trying to win a championship. And um, the single accolades, I used to chase them, but at this point, um, I know where I am in my career. I know what kind of player I am, and um, those won't come if they if they won't, if they're gonna come. But the rest of it, you know, it's the team sport. I gotta figure out a way to help this team get to the point. And if we all win, everybody wins. Everybody gets rookie of the year like Scotty last year. Um, you know, us making the playoff, that was all great achievement that, you know, it's not singled out. It's the whole team that made it. How hard is that for young players to realize that some of the things that you just talked about and even the things you learned last year about not, every, not everyone's going to be a star, but you have to learn to accept a role that fits you? Um, I think the NBA does a really good job showing it by himself. You know, like when you're a young player, you think, you know, everything's going to be easy and you're just going to come here and, but there's guys here that have been here for a long time. There's people that are hungry that are coming for you too. And it's not going to be as easy as you think. You know, sometimes you don't understand the schemes. You're not a good defender. All those things are going to come eventually and it's going to hit you. So um, for a young guy, if, if not an advice I would say is to stay with it, but also know that, um, you know, you don't have to be a superstar to be successful in the league. You could do a lot of different stuff. You could be a superstar in defense. You could be a superstar rebounder. You could do a lot of stuff that 
will make you get paid first of all, but also make you recognized in the league and you know push your career to places where you never thought it would go. C'est clair. Ouais, je pense que ben, j'ai eu un peu de paix euh, il y a deux ans quand j'ai signé le premier contrat, mais je pense que maintenant, euh, c'est juste plus... Euh, je sais à quoi m'attendre. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de, de surprises. Il y a beaucoup de choses que j'ai appris que maintenant, si ça revient, je sais déjà quoi faire. Puis aussi le fait, comme j'ai dit, euh, on essaie de, de, de faire des affaires géantes en ce moment. On essaie d'atteindre un, un, un but où est-ce que... Ah, on, on peut faire une légende pour nous. Puis je pense que la meilleure chose à faire pour moi, c'est de rester focus sur les bonnes choses. Mais avec tout ce que Toronto m'a donné, c'est dur de ne pas pouvoir faire ça puis pas être en paix dans ma tête. Euh, ben, J'ai la famille, euh, je suis Canadien. Il euh, y a beaucoup de choses que je veux faire pour les jeunes, que je pense que j'ai une plateforme ici que je peux utiliser. Euh, comme j'ai dit, euh, le fait qu'ils savaient déjà qui, qui, à quoi m'attendre, ils ont déjà mis un rôle pour moi, que j'excelle dedans. C'était beaucoup plus facile pour moi de faire une décision qu'aller quelque part d'autre, d'essayer de trouver une façon de, de changer ou de changer qui je suis. Puis le rôle que je suis, comme j'ai dit, ce n'est pas toutes les équipes qui ont besoin de ça, mais Toronto, ils m'ont mis dans une position parce que c'est ça qu'ils ont besoin. Et puis c'était facile pour moi de revenir ici pour ça. Ah, comme je dis, euh, je l'ai dit ça depuis le début. Depuis que je suis arrivé dans la NBA, c'est ça que je dis, qu on a du talent au Québec, c'est ce qu'on ne se pas le voir assez. Euh, mais c'est bien de voir que maintenant, comme je dis, après moi, Lou, Cam, euh, Ben, maintenant, je pense que le monde voit qu'au Québec, on a du talent. Puis, au fil, ça va aider le monde à aller au Québec, puis aller voir le talent, les, les, le faire aller aux États-Unis s'il faut pour qu'ils aient l'expansion. Puis, euh, comme je dis, nous, ça, c'est un début. Pourquoi je suis venu à Toronto, c'est que j'essaie de faire grandir cette vision-là. Puis je pense que Toronto me donne une bonne image pour moi pour que je fasse ça pour les jeunes. Parce que, comme j'ai dit, euh, je suis juste un exemple de plein de talents qu'on a au Québec. Merci. Chris, tu as mentionné que lire le jeu, jouer Smarter, tu étais comme un type de type de défenseur ce mm -hmm. passé, mais tu as fait des charges. Combien de plus tard tu penses que tu as besoin de faire ça dans le sport? Maybe do do the read faster. I think I I don't know if I could lead. I I, I know I could be up there. To be honest with you, but I feel like you know with the team that we have, um, people get better every year. Um, I do think people are gonna take a lot of charge more now because I think that's just a read thing. I just want to be able to make it faster than them, and that's the one thing I work on is how fast can I get to that spot? How fast can I know what that person, the next person is gonna do? What is If he goes left, okay, when is he jumping so I could be there? Or if he goes right, what kind of shot is he taking? Those are the stuff that I'm trying to get better at because, like I said, the game has so many places where you could actually be successful and be great at that I'm trying to find all those little places to make my game better. And that's what made me better for the playoffs, that made me play better for the end of the season is that I start doing stuff that you know people don't want to do. And I'm trying to push it to another limit. What other stuff that people don't want to do that I could do? And being an important part of the bench, what do you make of Otto Porter coming in? Oh, that's great. I saw him in a shooter. Obviously, he was at Golden State. So, um, like I said, it's going to add up a lot of depth for us. And also, like I said, he's been in the league for a long time, too. So, um, he's going to bring some experience. He seems to be excited to be here. I haven't met him yet, but um, I saw his interview and all. And, Uh, it seems like he's gonna bring a lot of chemistry and a lot of you know happiness like that did and you know in Toronto there's guys like that that we need um, guys that want to help that want to teach that have experience and are ready to, ready to work hard. Chris, uh, just uh, you talk a bit about your relationship with Nick Nurse and sort of how his uh, coaching helped your development over the past year and your whole time with Raptors. Yeah, um, I think um, one thing Nick Nurse realized about me is that. Uh, You know, I perform a lot better when, um, you know, somebody's hard on me. And sometimes, some way I get comfortable, and when I get comfortable, that's when it gets shaky. But I think somehow, some way, you always knew when to, you know, 
like you know telling me like okay Chris you know you're messing up you know you guys saw it uh, um, usually it makes me play the best game after so um, that helped me through the years where at a point where I was like well honestly I don't really want that to be the reason why I have to play well so um, yeah like I said he helped me with that and like I said those conversations that I have with him are a lot smoother than it was before just because now I know where he's coming from and um, like I said, he wants to win. He has so many ways of coaching and all that, but um, I had to figure out what made me help, what, what helped me. And clearly he knew that before me and that helped us out.